this video has um, been made over the course of about three or four days. So if I repeat myself or show something twice, you'll have to accept my apology for that. Um, I don't remember what all I did on the first or second day. And I don't feel like going back and playing the videos back. So here's the uh, video from the past three or four days. Well, as you saw in yesterday's video, and you're going to see in this one, we got a ton of snow yesterday. It turned out to be record-breaking. We got about 9, 10 inches, first snow of the year. So I guess it was record-breaking being the earliest snow, or the largest earliest snow. And now we're going to go into record-breaking cold. They're talking single digits, maybe down near zero tonight. So I'm going to do some more work on the Galaxy. i got to go out and run this, clean the driveway up. A lot of people asked about this. It's a 1976 Aaron Snow Throw. You can change the front attachment to a mower deck or a brush or I don't know. They made about half dozen rotor tiller. A whole bunch of uh, attachments. You'd have to take the heater box off and put an air filter on for the other attachments. This has 120 volt electric start four forward, reverse, it's got a five horsepower Tecumseh HS50 engine on it. It always starts on the first pull. I rarely ever use the electric start. Um, I've had it for probably 35 years anyway and uh, I took it on trade for another snowblower because the this one was run without oil and it seized it up. So I bought a new replacement short block and I used the head and the carburetor, manifolds, muffler, fuel tank, blower housing, flywheel, all that stuff off the original engine. like right on nine inches. I started bead blasting the components for the engine compartment and the all little brackets, lower radiator, the other engine mount bracket, the right backing plate, that's the brake shoe side, that's the outboard side, and I was just about ready to start on this one but I'm going to prime that other bracket first and then I'm going to start on this backing plate so that's kind of a before I got to take that uh, gasket off so I don't wreck it and that's after got the other engine mount and other backing plate the, this is the left side it's got uh, you know, it's got pits in the metal, but it's clean, and it's uh, zinc chromate primed. I ran out of the gray color zinc chromate, so I just went with this. That's still kind of wet, that's why it's glossy. These are going to be <coughs> gloss black acrylic enamel, like the uh, transmission and stuff, because, and the reason why I paint, um, these with the gloss is they, it's more durable the solvents the acrylic enamel so if somebody does a brake job in the future and sprays this down with brake clean it won't take the paint off all right I painted those pieces and again I painted these with a good quality acrylic enamel that's the piece the voltage regulator bolts to goes in the inner fender but anyway that way, if a uh, brake cleaner is sprayed on, you know, it doesn't take the finish off. But they're, especially this side, you know, they're kind of got some pits in them from the surface rust over the last 53 years. But they look a thousand times better than they did, that's for sure. And uh, once the brake shoes and brake drums and stuff are on there, you won't even see any of that. But it will be protected from rust. And again, if a future brake job is done, won't ruin the paint job cleaning it up. And I got one of the control arms blasted and primed and I'm going to paint it. I'm using different paint 
on the control arms and what I use on the uh, rest of the stuff. The frames and the control arms are going to be Rust-Oleum. <coughs> you can see some of the pits in the metal from the, you know, but it cleaned up really nice. The surface rust just cleans off really quick and easy. This is what I <coughs> primed it with. And this is what I'm going to paint it with. And that is not gloss, it is satin. And I'm going to thin it with this. And I can just leave it in my spray gun because it doesn't have a catalyst in it. that will make it harden in my gun in a day or two. So as I get the pieces primed and let the primer dry 24 hours, I'll spray them so that they can dry to work on them. You know, that paint will take a few, three or four days before I can handle it without messing it up. And then I can start, you know, I got a lot of cleaning in here to do. But at least those pieces will be drying because I don't need to handle this once I paint it. I can probably start assembling it the next day. I'm trying to wipe it up and clean it up without taking that off just to video it, but there's some more of that light green paint. This is all the right side parts. I'm wondering if the left side parts have red paint on them. We'll soon find out when we get to them. That looks pretty good. That's a lot lower gloss than the, like the uh, gloss of that. I don't know if the difference shows up or not, but it is a low gloss. We got some of this stuff blasted. I got to clean the grease up around that. That'll go in and the Spindle is in there now, but I was just letting the poor old air compressor cool down. It kind of runs a lot when it cycles on and off, but it does run a lot when I'm bead blasting. So I'm going to let the air compressor cool down for a couple hours and then I'll continue bead blasting. I did tape the ball joint off, you know, seeing that they're the original riveted, so it would look like original. It says lower right there. But, um,. Yeah, it's going to get all greasy eventually anyway, so, you know, I just kind of did a quickie on it, but it looks better. Yep, cleaned up pretty good out of the bead blast cabinet, so I'm going to take the duct tape off here because it's probably trapped some sand in there, and I'm going to mask it and prime it. Looks really good. Oh, it's all the uh, bits and pieces hanging all up from the rafters of the garage. Just cleaning up the grease and crud off this from the ball joints. You can see it was pretty, pretty deep in there. And it's actually in pretty good shape with the grease. So it's <laughs> These clean up really actually quite easily surprisingly easier than what i expected them to so let me finish scraping this and i'll bead blast it and we'll get this one well with the snow i don't know if i'll get it primed and painted or not before i uh clean that up with any solvent or anything you can see there was a white it looked like it was like a square might like maybe even a label but anyway there's definitely a white paint on there They're cleaning up really nice. All right, the right side's done. Now I'm going to start on the left side. Basically, this is all I have left for the left side, the spindle, the upper, and lower control arm. I'm going to scrape the grease off of them first, and then start bead blasting them. I'm cleaning up the driver's side spindle. There's pink paint there, there, and a little bit of paint right there. So that looks like yellow though. The other two are definitely pink. So I just, uh, you know, I clean this up before it goes in the glass cabinet. It's actually pretty, pretty clean to start with. So it cleans up pretty nice in the glass cabinet. Just brought it in from my spray booth. Spray painting it. Looks pretty good. I think that we'll call that one done. Now I'm going to Get these two and the spindle done, and then I can start on the chassis and the engine compartment. I gotta pull a 
grill on the bumper. Might pull the headlight buckets too. We'll see. I don't know if it shows up or not, but there is remnants of black paint on this. So I am going to paint it back to black. I thought maybe they were just cast iron. But the other one too had remnants of black on it. Now don't you think that looks a thousand times better? Alright, I'm going to get on the last two control arms. Left floor control arms all primed. This control arm looks pretty darn good. <coughs> Not a lot of pits in it. Might work on that hole there in the next day or two, but I definitely got to clean all this frame surface rust up so I can, you know, on the inner fenders and get this dent out. So the next uh, week or so is going to be doing the engine compartment. I'm going to pull a front grill. The bumper, I don't know if I said this or not, like I say this video has been over four days. Might even pull a headlight buckets because you know eventually I'm going to have to pull them and paint the fenders. And that way I can paint the core support and paint everything up nice. I got new uh, rubber for here. The rubber's fine but I got the stuff so I might as well put it on. It looks like I'll have to pull that out maybe to get to the nuts. But we'll, uh, we'll deal with that when we get to it. That's a day. I got a lot done. Got all the control arms in this past few days completely cleaned up and painted other than the uh, left hand one, the upper and lower arm primer. And uh, as you see, they came out pretty good. I showed that one, I believe. And uh, this is the upper. I'll shoot some paint on them tomorrow. And and uh, then we'll get to work on this. If you like my video, hit the like button. If you want to see this cool galaxy resurrected, then subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.